We use the abstract system of numbers to describe our relationship with the physical world all the time. We interact with measurements every day when we describe the, dis the distances between things or the size of things. When we describe the weather, we have a way of being able to relate something of our physical world. As soon as we had to start communicating our measurements of the physical world with other people, communicating about our measurements of the physical world with other people, it soon became clear that we had to find a standard way of knowing that we're talking about the same quantities. So a unit of measurement is something that's very important when it comes to quantifying physical relationships and physical dimensions. There should be a rigorous way for us to calculate these things rather than having to perform these calculations by hand, useful though they are, there should also be a way to automate these calculations. And in order for us to be able to compare two different measurements, both of those measurements have to be in the same unit so that we're comparing apples to apples rather than apples to oranges. The SI base unit is an internationally agreed upon standard for the measurement of physical quantities of mass, length, time, amount of substance, electric current, thermodynamic temperature and luminous intensity. And from these seven base units, a further 22 units have been derived. Units for force, pressure, power, frequency, magnetic flux, capacitance and so on. Some of the SI base units, such as the Kelvin for temperature, is only used in a scientific context, whereas others are used daily depending on where in the world you reside. The meter for distance and the kilogram for weight are a common sight in countries that have adopted the metric system. We mostly rely on degrees, either Fahrenheit or Celsius, to measure temperature, and similarly we have of these other units of measurement for distance, mass, and pretty much the only measurement we all agree on is time. We use the SI unit of distance, the meter, to describe the relationship of physical objects in space. The measure of x meters describes a distance in one dimension, whereas two lengths can describe the area of a plane in two dimensions. If we add another measure of depth, then we're describing the volume of vessels and objects in three dimensions. With three coordinates, each representing a distance from a common point, we're now able to describe the distance between physical objects in space in any direction. The meter for distance as well as the gram for weight are linear units of measurement with base 10, which means that we multiply and divide by different powers of 10 to find the larger and smaller units. So to convert between meters and kilometers as well as between meters and millimeters, we're, we're, we're either dividing by a thousand or multiplying by a thousand. So these powers of 10 are always in use and it's the same with grams and kilograms. However, when we're converting between inches and meters and feet and meters and yards and these other non-metric units, we have constants that we need to multiply and divide by. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters or 25.4 millimeters, which means that we can find a constant with which to multiply or divide the values so that we can interchangeably convert between these different units. So a value like 32 inches can be converted to 81 centimeters, 812 millimeters or 0 0.812 meters. The first function we can define for instance is converting inches to centimeters. First you define inches as the input that you receive from the user so and you convert that to float of course and then for our centimeters this is where the actual unit conversion calculation comes in where we multiply the inch value by 2.54 to receive a centimeter value and we can then divide that centimeter value by 100 for a meter value as meter is the actual SI base unit. This will then print us uh, a formatted string which contains both the inches originally entered as well as the centimeters and meters that have been calculated and if we were for instance going to use this these functions somewhere in another program and we need these values to just be returned and not only printed to the terminal, we can return the output of this function as a list containing both the centimeter and the meter value. We can do something similar with feet once we receive a feet input from the user um, and again return a list with centimeter and meters. We can do the same with miles to kilometers, even parsecs, nautical miles, yards 
and light years. Why not? So inches to centimeters is already running and it's asking the user for its input. This is 21 inches, 53 centimeters as well as 0.53 meters. Same with feet, 150 feet, 45.72 meters, miles, if we walked a thousand miles, we would have walked 1,609 kilometers. To measure vast distances in the final frontier of space, we need a final frontier in the scale of distance measurement with a unit that's often confused to be a measure of time, but is actually a measure of distance, the light year. Now, a light year is the distance that light travels in a vacuum in a year, and this is equal to 9,46 trillion kilometers, both 9,46 times 10 to the power of 12 kilometers for each light year, which translates to 9,46 times 10 to the power 15 meters. That's nine with 15 zeros at the end. And converting a distance from light years into kilometers is a slightly more uh, laborious calculation for a person, but it's very easy to even compute a massive kilometer distance very quickly. So one light year is equal to 9.46 trillion kilometers. So that's 9.46 times 10 to the power 12. And that's why when we enter values such as 4,500, for instance, it's an average sort of distance. It's an absolutely astronomical number. If we look at the thousands, hundred thousands, millions, so billions start over here on the seven. That's tens of billions, one hundreds, trillions. Tens of trillions, one hundreds of trillions, thousands of trillions, or quadrillions. So this is something like 42 quadrillion kilometers. Quite a distance. In just a few lines of code, we have four independent functions that can convert between different measurements of distance. And we could add any others that we can imagine, fathoms and parsecs and nautical miles and the like.